Hello again. Um, I know in the last video I said I was going to be showing some more functionality for the this pointer, or at least a more practical use for it, or one way to apply it, you know, whatever. Um, I'm actually not going to be talking about that in this video. I was planning on it, but then I decided I wasn't going to talk about that for a few videos. So I'll talk about it uh, later, but not in this video. Um, but that's just another reason to subscribe um, if you wanna see when that happens but anyway we are still going to be talking about something exciting in this video and that's called operator overloading and what this is gonna allow us to do is define custom behavior for our own classes uh, when used with certain operators so what we're gonna be using this for is I wrote, rewrote out the time class and we're gonna set it up so that we can use the plus operator to um, add times together. And I'll also set up uh, subtraction and multiplication and division just to do all the basic arithmetic and show you how that's done. So let's get going. Um, when to define, to implement this uh, overloading of operators, um, you basically act like you're making a whole new method, except it has to have a specific name that uh, C++ will um, interpret as uh, operator um, methods, if that makes sense. Whatever, you'll, you'll, you'll see it, how it works. So basically, we need to make a, make a method. So we need a return type. So for the arithmetic um, methods, I'm going to have them return another time object. Uh, so, y you know, an integer plus an integer returns an integer. So a time object plus a time object is going to return uh, another time object, which will be the sum of the two. So we'll have it return a time, and then the name of your method is operator, and then you put the operator that you'd like to use. So we want the plus operator, but you could also do minus, you could do address, you can do the logical or operator, you can do the little arrow, you can do streams, extraction, and insertion, you can do just about any operator you can think of. Um, the only restriction is the, that you can't start making up operators. So you can't just decide that you want two number signs to do something for your class. Um, it has to be a valid operator uh, already in C++ that you're just going to be uh, overloading for your class. But still, you can do just about any operator. But I'll just use the arithmetic operators here. I'll do the plus operator. And then... Uh, you need to think about whether you need arguments or not. Because if we're doing a unary operator, like the plus plus operator, that only operates on the object itself. It doesn't need another term. And that's what unary means. So it's not going to need any arguments. But the plus operator is going to need another term in the expression. So for that reason, we will need to pass in a time object. I'll just call it um, A. Something simple. So now let's write out the other uh, methods. I'll do subtraction, multiplication, and then I'll also do division. I don't know how useful division would really be practically, but um, I'll go ahead and put it in for the sake of completeness. Now if you're wondering how I'm going to do some of this, like division with these four members might seem kind of tricky. Uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to make a uh, another method it's going to return an integer, and it's just going to be total seconds. And that's basically going to tally up uh, all of these variables uh, to get the total number of seconds represented by the class. Now, it's not going to change any values in the class, so it's not going to change any of these members. It's just going to do the math to figure out uh, the total number of seconds. So then I'll do the division with just those total number of seconds, because then that's just integer division, and it's, uh, it's, it's doable and pretty easy to understand. So let's go ahead and do our total seconds method first. Um, this is pretty simple, we're just going to return seconds uh, plus minutes, and so for every minute there should be 60 seconds, so we multiply by 60. Hours, there are 60 minutes in every one hour, so we multiply by 60, and then same with minutes, we multiply, uh, multiply it by 60 again because there are 60 seconds in every minute days, there are 24 hours in a day, uh, and then 60 uh, minutes in every hour, and then 60 seconds in every minute. 
and that'll give us the total number of seconds represented by the class. So let's go ahead and start uh, implementing our operators. Um, okay, so this is pretty simple actually. Uh, one thing that's important to note about how we're going to be implementing these, uh, when we, let's make this bigger, when we had integers, like integer t equals 5 or something, and then we wanted to increase t by, uh, I don't know, 6, get 11, um, we didn't go t plus 6 and have that be the statement. Uh, we either went t plus equals 6, or we did t equals t plus 6. Now it works the same, that, that's the same way we'd like to implement it in the time class. Um, personally, I'm not going to define behavior for the plus equals operator because you do need to go ahead and write out another method for the plus equals operator. But I'm not going to do that just for the sake of time because I, uh, I think you can extrapolate and figure it out for yourself based on uh, the other operators. Um, so we'll, we'll be doing something like this except with time objects. So keep in mind, basically my point here is that we, we shouldn't be modifying any of our member variables here because t plus 6, uh, if we have another integer, t, t, the integer, should not be modified at all. It should still be 5 after this assignment. a is the only thing that should get modified. So we want this to return an integer, basically, which will get assigned to a. So with this being time objects, we'll have this return a time, which will then uh, get assigned to A, and T will uh, not be changed at all. So all we're going to be doing, return time, we use the name of the class uh, to indicate that we're making a new object, and then we can uh, use the constructor. Now, before I do this, I am also going to do one other thing, which is define another constructor. It's just going to be pretty simple, it's just going to take one argument, and it'll be one integer, and that'll be the number of seconds. So what I'll do, I'll, I'll set seconds equals s, and then we want to set days and minutes and uh, hours all equal to zero. Uh, one little shorthand for that is we could go like days equals zero, hours equals zero, but the, the shorthand is we can go days equals hours equals minutes equals zero. And uh, C++ will go right to left here and set minutes equal to zero, and then hours equal to minutes, and then days equal to hours, so it'll all get set to zero. So it's just a little shorthand. And then we'll also want to call adjust time. Um, okay, so the only reason, well there are a few reasons I'm doing that. One is because um, all I'm going to be doing here is total seconds plus a dot total seconds. Uh, and then the time will automatically get adjusted. So this is the same way I'm going to be doing all of the other arithmetic. It'll be the same with multiplication and division as well. So this way we don't have to worry about any of the other commas in that lengthy for argument constructor because we just have uh, we just have that one argument in that seconds constructor. Uh, the other reason that I'm doing this is if we have a time object like t, maybe it's uh, 30 seconds, and then we want to make a uh, t2 time object which is maybe t multiplied by 2 when we set this up, when we go ahead down and uh, we actually do get to multiplication, it's still going to take a time object. And it's going to do pretty much the same thing as the addition one, except we're just going to use a multiplication sign. Um, but the thing is, most of the time you might actually want to multiply your time object by an integer. So we want to go t times 2, like that. We just want to double it. We don't want to multiply it by a whole new time object. But uh, the magic here is that by making this constructor so that it only takes one uh, argument, we're building in the functionality to typecast an int into a time. I talked about this a few, a few videos ago, so if it's kind of a confusing concept, feel free to go back and watch that video. But basically, by uh, having a constructor that only takes one argument, we're allowing this two, which is an integer, to be converted or typecast into a time object for the purposes of this multiplication. So that's kind of handy when we only want to double a time and we don't want to multiply two times to t together. We want to actually use an integer. So I'm also going to do subtraction as well. 
these are pretty easy to write out because they're all very similar because of this nifty little total seconds method. Oops. Um, one thing to keep in mind about division is that we are going to be dividing integers here because the total seconds method returns integers. So there is going to be a little bit of rounding uh, going on. So that's something that you should keep in mind. Though I, I still can't really think of a, a use for the division operator with time objects. But if you, uh, if you do need that functionality, keep in mind that there will be some rounding going on. Um, okay, I think that's it for all our arithmetic operators. And I think that should actually finish out the class. Oh, one thing I forgot to mention. When I wrote out the destructor, I went ahead and just uh, implemented it right here in the class. You can do that. Just put it between these brackets. Uh, these are empty because the destructor doesn't do anything. So I went ahead and just put it in there.